Hello, in this video we'll be installing SQL Server 2014. Now you might be wondering, okay, we're in the year 2020 something, why on earth should we care about SQL Server 2014? That's years ago. And the reason is, if you have got a 32-bit version of Windows, then you can't install SQL Server 2016 or above. All you can do, the latest version, for you is SQL Server 2014. Now one of the good things about installing SQL Server 2014 is that the requirements are very low. For example, you need a 1 GHz CPU. Now I should say that that is an absolute minimum and it will work with much higher, but this is the absolute law. So quite frankly, that's probably most people's computer if you're using a 32-bit version of Windows. So you don't need an actual server to install it on, it can go on your own computer. And best of all, it's free. At least the Express version, which is the one that we're going to be installing. So let's have a look at how we can do this. So SQL Server 2014. If I Google that, you can see that the first item I can see is download Microsoft SQL Server 2014 Express. Now you can also download the developer edition, which is a more powerful version. And if you want to explore SSIS integration services and SQL Server analysis services, SSAS, then you could well do so. But if you're just looking at creating select statements, if you're looking at database administration to a certain extent, and if you're looking at SQL Server reporting services, then I would stick with the Express version. It's a lot easier to do. So let's click on that and you can see that I have the download button. Click on this and this gives me an awful lot of options. So first of all, what are these numbers? X64 and X86. Well, 64 indicates a 64-bit Windows. Now you can tell what version of Windows you've got is if you go to something like your Windows Explorer, right and click on this PC, you will see about and you can see that my version is a 64-bit operating system. However, I can install and download a 32-bit program. If yours is a 32-bit program, then you won't be able to install a 64-bit program. So, 64 indicates a 64-bit program. For historic reasons, an 86 indicates a 32-bit program. So you can't install any of the 64s if you've got a 32-bit computer. Now we've got all of these various things. Now a lot of these you won't need. They're there if, for instance, you have a, want to have a lightweight version of Express for programmability. But really, the only things you need to concern yourself with are the Express with tools, Express and tools. So this allows you to install the back engine and the front engine. So in other words, the thing that does the computation and the thing that you can use called SQL Server Management Studio. So that is that one. Or alternatively, if you want to use reporting services, SSRS, then you should install the Express with Advanced Services. So all the rest you don't really need to worry about. So I'm going to go for the Express and Tools 32-bit. So you can see it's a fair bit smaller, 840 megabytes compared to 1,100 megabytes. So click next, make sure you're downloading the 32-bit version, which has an 86 in there. So I'm just going to pause the video and let it download. Right, so SQL Express 2014 has now downloaded, so I'll click on it. If you've got any antivirus, it may have to be checked by that as well. So the computer has asked, do I want the app to make any changes to my computer? Yes. Choose a directory for the extracted file. So you can see it is going to be downloading in my downloads. So now it is extracting. And after a few seconds, this window appears. So we're in the installation section. New SQL Server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation. So I'm going to click on this, so it's, we want a new standalone installation. So accept the license terms, obviously I would suggest you read them. I don't suggest turning on the custom, customer experience improvement program, it's been quite a number of years for anything to be improved and I don't think they're going to do any 
major changes. So it selected everything, so I can code that. So I'll click on next. Then it says, where are you going to have this? Well, you can have the default instance, which if it's going to be on your computer and you're just using it for your own purposes, I would recommend. If you're having it in production, then you probably want a named instance anyway. So I'm going to click on default instance, click next. So we're going through a few things, which I'm just going to say, yes, that's no problem. So collation, that is how text gets sorted. So case insensitive, accent sensitive, for instance. So that's just a standard, but we can change that when using the SQL server. Now, server configuration, we're having a Windows authentication mode. In other words, you log into Windows and we're using the same login for SQL Server. The alternative is that you would have SQL Server authentication as well, which means that you would have your own username and password. Now, make sure you are there as an SQL Server administrator. If you're not, then make sure you click on Add Current User. So these are the directories. You might need to change them if you have got multiple disks and you're running short on one of them. So then it just installs and it is a fairly straightforward procedure. So I'm just going to let it install at a faster speed. Right, so after just a few minutes, probably about five minutes, it has now been installed. So I'll click close and I will be able to close all of this. So what do I do now? How can I use SQL Server? Well, I can go and search for SQL Server 2014 Management Studio. So you can see I just typed in SSMS, that's the acronym. So click on this and after a few seconds, it will open and say, okay, what database are you looking for? And if this is your local database that you have installed on your own computer, then you can type in localhost, or that's just one word. Or alternatively, just type in adult. Leave everything else as is. So server type, leave as database engine. Authentication, leave as Windows authentication. Now, of course, if you are installing SQL Server on another computer, then it's a bit more difficult, but I'm assuming you're just installing it on your own computer and using SSMS on your own computer. Once everything is there, click connect. And there you are, you're in. So I can click on new query and I can type in my query. So select star from sys.object. So this just queries a system table that's already there. Or I can start the process by creating a new database then adding data to it and then retrieving it using my select statements. So this is how you install SQL Server 2014 Express. You don't need a server and it's completely free. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.